Hi Keys Mods fans, this is David Fine. Today we're going to do something a little different. We are going to take a look at an underwing moth that we collected in North Florida. Uh, Ricky and I went up to North Florida and did some moth collecting on the northwest portion of the state, Levy County, and we found a beautiful little underwing or catacola moth. Now, we're going to show you this moth, and I don't know the identification of it yet, because there are, my understanding, about 230 species of moths in this genus alone worldwide. In North America, over 110, and I think there's more than that. These things keep, keep getting described all the time. But just think about it, even if it was just 110 catacola moths, underwing moths, that's a lot to get sift through because they all look, a lot of them look very, very similar. But we are going to go over underwing moths with you just a little bit, and then we're gonna mount this species together and we're gonna go hunt for an identification. Let's check it out. Guys, so what I have here before we mount our new little Catacola moth, I, I just wanted to show you just some of the variations of Catacola or underwing moths. And these things, are known for their, their name underwing is because look at the beautiful colors on the hind wings of these moths. Well, there's a black hind wing there, but uh, underwing moths, that's what they're known for. They're, they, when they're at rest, they rest with their forewing slid down over the top of the, of the underwing or the hind wing and you can't tell them apart at all. You, you can't see the hind wing when they're at rest and they very, very seldom ever display their hind wing. Every now and then you'll get lucky enough to see the colors of the hind wing in nature, uh, but collecting them is, is actually kind of necessary in order to do the proper taxonomy and uh, find out what's what. So uh, guys, another cool thing about uh, Catacola, genus Catacola, the people that named a lot of these species have made really had some fun with the names and i'm gonna i'm gonna go over some names with you there is something called katakala cara and the, the name is the darling underwing the darling underwing there is another one called katakala inubis the betrothed underwing there's katakala this one guys this one here is called the girlfriend now i don't know Guys, if you start dating a girl, naming naming this moth after it, like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if that's gonna help you uh, in your pursuit to get a girl. But this is called the girlfriend underwing. This one here, I believe this is the widow underwing, Catacola vidula, uh, vidua. All right, here we have Catacola concubens. Uh, I'm not going there. <laughs> And, you know, we've got some really, really cool uh, names on some of these moths. But there are some general forms. There's a bunch of different ones with black hind wings. There's, there's some of them with yellow hind wings. And then we've got this series of red, peach, and orange colored hind wings. And we not, I'm not a Catacola expert. There are some guys in the Southern Lepidoptera Society that that are much better at identifying these than I am because we don't really have a whole lot of underwing moths in South Florida. So uh, if you want to join a group of guys and gals that really love moths and butterflies and can help you out, I'm going to suggest joining the Southern Lepidoptera Society. Uh, it's The link to their website is in my description. Join today because there's a couple hundred people there that study the butterflies and moths of southern, Southeastern United States. And um, they, you can ask them all about the beautiful underwing moths. And there's some guys there that can really help you identify these things. So uh, guys, enough having fun here. You know, we, you can collect underwing moths at lights. You can collect them at using fruit and, and uh, baiting them with sugar and fruit. Uh, we're not gonna get into that right now. We'll probably do some other videos on that. Let's get into mounting our Catacola species. All right, guys, here is our underwing moth that we found in Gulf Hammock, Florida. Now the, the, the underside, the ventral side of the underwings 
is also very colorful, which also is hidden while they're at rest because they rest kind of sitting like this with their wings down. Look at the coloration on this. Now, the underside always has the color of the top side. So on the, on the black Catacola Moth series, this underside is all dark and it's just got some white colors or, or, or white blotches, but there's no orange, there's no yellow, there's no red. But on the red colored moths, the underside is red and yellow, it's yellow, okay? But when we open up this moth, look at the four wing pattern. That four wing pattern is absolutely stunning. It's an orange hind wing. So that's a beautiful thing. This is a very fresh specimen. Guys, we are going to mount this moth right now. Notice how whenever I touch a moth and I'm mounting it, I always use forceps because when you touch with your fingers, your oils from your hands will take scales off. So first thing we gotta do is select the right size board. I like to select the board that the, where the thorax just barely fits inside. This one's gonna be too big. I believe this one will fit nicely and you'll see why that helps us in a minute. Okay, folks, we have our Catacola species and I'm gonna try and do this holding my phone in my hand and mounting this thing literally with one hand so I can film with the other. Not easy. We've got a number two black enamel insect pin. And we use those because that is, they don't corrode, they don't rust. It's, it's, it's really nice. It's a beautiful, beautiful pin. Uh, a little expensive, but it's the way we do it. All right, now, the other thing we do, or we, we put the pin right through the, the very, very center of the thorax, okay? And then we the pin should come out in between the legs on the underside of the body, right? Now, we always use a protom block, and that helps us measure the height on the pin that the specimen's supposed to go to. So there's three holes. We go to the deepest hole to put the body in. We put the pin all the way down till it doesn't go anymore. Fantastic. Now, next thing I'll do is take my forceps and just loosen up the wings a little bit. And what I'll do is, uh, this is a pretty fresh specimen, so it doesn't need a whole lot of loosening. Uh, but I'll, I'll kind of, well, let me show you something real quick. The way this moth will rest in nature, guys, it'll rest with its wings pushed down or pushed down over the body. That's how you'll see it. If you ever see this moth in nature, this is what it'll look like. You're not gonna see those yellow wings, but we're gonna show you the full beauty of this guy. And the first thing we gotta do is we gotta get that, twist the head so that the head is on straight. It's a little more difficult sometimes then. It's been in an envelope for a few days. So we twist the head, make sure the head is on straight. That way the antenna can be mounted straight. Now, we'll take our specimen and we're gonna go right up here and put it, I already have these uh, little pieces of paper mount ready here. And we're gonna put the the specimen down into the board right there so that the wings can lay flat on the board. And the reason we want a board gap that's about the same length or the same width as the thorax is because when we twist, when we take the wing of the moth and we try to bring it up, the natural tendency will be for the body to twist with the moth and when the, the board is there, it keeps the body from twisting, it keeps it straight. And that is very helpful. So uh, we're going to take our little pieces of paper. I use cardstock. Some guys use, you know, other methods and I'm sure there's better ways, but this works for me, it's cheap. I can always get a hold of cardstock and it works for me. So put the, the, the antenna I'll put the antennae underneath the white piece of paper in the place where I want them. That's about right. Okay. Then what I'll do is 
I'll take this piece of paper and I will pin it down, not too tight, but some, somewhat loose, you know, tight enough where the wings will stay put, but loose enough where I can move the wings where I want them without the specimen, without messing up the wings. All right, now, next step, I'll take an, a pin and I'll use the, wait, I don't use the black. I use the stainless steel pins for doing the mounting. Um, and what you'll do is you'll you'll use the vein of the forewing on the left side. I always go from left to right, because I'm right-handed. So I'll start from the left side and I'll do the left wing and then I'll move over and do the right side because if I did it opposite, if I did this side first, then I have to move my big fat man fingers over here over the work that's already did and I'll probably touch the pin and it'll mess up the mount job. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll use the veins of the moth to move the wing. So there's a big, huge, thick vein right here that runs along the four wing costa and I'll just use it. I'm not gonna puncture the wing. I'm just gonna use that vein to push the wing into position where I want it. And then it, the piece of paper right here that's pressed down over the top holds it in place. Then I move down to the hind wing. There's also a vein in the middle of the wing and I'll use that vein to push the wing where I want it there. Okay, now that looks fairly straight what you, the whole idea is you want this bottom piece of the forewing to kind of go straight across the thorax to the other side and match with the other side of the other wing. So I'll, what I'll do now, this wing is pretty much where I want it. So I'll put a pin right there, right underneath. And then I will start on the other side. Now moving over to the right side, the antennae are kind of sort of in the right place. Let me get another pin. Move the antenna so that they're in the right spot. Now, same thing. Use the vein on the forewing, push it up. Now, you see what happens? When I move this one up, the left side dropped. Very interesting how everything's kind of attached. So we gotta, gotta be careful how we do this. All right, now, I might have to adjust here. I might put a pin right there and hold it in place better. Sometimes we need to do that. And I'm gonna move this wing back up. Okay. And then get the hind wing where I want it. All right. We're getting pretty close, guys. That looks, does that look symmetrical to you? This, the bottom of the forewing, you want it to make a line straight across the thorax to the other side. That's how you know that your moth forewings are in the right spot when you're mounting. At least that's the style that I use, okay? So this looks pretty good. I am going to now snap a picture of this before I cover the forewings. And we are going to see if we can identify this creature uh, on the internet. Okay, the next step, we have to cover these wings so that they dry nice and flat. So, you know, a lot of guys use wax paper and there's different styles that you can use to, to do this. This isn't the only way. I use cardstock uh, and I try not to pin too close to where the wings are. You see how the pins I have are, are fairly far away from where the wings are? That, that way, it's not like jamming the paper down onto the wings. It should be fairly soft. It should be like just pressing it down so that it flattens it a little bit, but you don't want to jam it down because then what you do is you get a crease there. You don't want to do that. So do the same thing with, with the other side. By the way, guys, here's what happens when you have air conditioning, which I do. I don't know if you can see this, but the four wing tips are starting to curl up. That's what happens. Let me see if I can zoom in here. See how these four wing tips are curling up? That's what happens as the wings start to dry out. As soon as you get them into the air conditioning, 
the wings start to dry out and that's, that's, we don't want that. We want them to be nice and flat. So in order to solve that, we have to cover the wings and that's why we are placing these pieces of paper on top of the wings. And when we do that, they will stay nice and flat and we'll have a nice, nice freshly mounted specimen. So last thing I'll do is just make sure that the abdomen is propped up a little bit so that it's flat with the rest of the body. A lot of times the abdomen, especially on like a big female that has an abdomen full of eggs, this abdomen will kind of like seep down into the board and, and it won't look, won't look nice at all because the abdomen's pointed down. Uh, so I'll brace the abdomen up with some pins. Now it's a waiting game, guys. We're just gonna wait uh, a week or two until this dries out completely and then we'll take it off the board. But let's see if we can identify our moth. All right, my favorite website for identifying moths is the North American Moth Photographers Group put out by Mississippi State University. They have all the moths of North America cataloged and they have all these plates. And if you wanna really get into it, it's, it is a, a beast. Now, all right, there are two pages of Catocala moth species that they have here. So check it out. These are all the Catocala moth species that we have to sift through to find what which one we have. And so now the first thing, we've got a few different colors on the, on the hind wing. And what we're looking for is a yellow specimen, right? So not all of them are yellow. Like some of these up here are kind of more orange. Obviously we have some black ones and we've got some reddish and peach colored specimens like like these like that that's not what we're looking for we're looking for the yellow ones and we're looking for one with a very heavily modeled uh and actually lighter colored forewing so we've got yellow specimens here but the forewing doesn't match let's keep looking and see that that looks interesting no nope, that's not yellow this is more of a like a peach color okay so that's not it, but the forewing is a little bit more, a little bit closer. There's a mottled forewing, still not the same. That's got a orange hindwing. Uh, let's see, no, 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 it's not the red guys. Not the red guys. Definitely not those. All right, it's getting closer. Now, could be, you know, what we can do is we can always just tap on this number and it'll show you where this creature lives. This is Catocala desdemona. And as you can see, that's an out, that's a Western bug. So this is not, this is not what we're looking for. All right, we're still looking guys. We're gonna look for a yellow hindwing moth with a very mottled, lighter colored forewing. Oh wow, that's way out west. Okay, that's definitely not it. Okay, whoops. We gotta go back out. Oh, all right, let's see guys. Um, possible. What else we got here? Modeled, 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 all right. I'm not seeing it. Let's go to page two and see what we can find. Page two, all right, page two is a lot smaller. Okay, now we're talking. Let's see. Micronympha. Let's see what we got here. Now that's possible. However, that gray, that deep gray forewing here, I'm not, I'm not feeling that. Because you can see the range. Look at Florida. Florida is right here. That thing's all lit up blue. Um, but that is definitely not the forewing of our specimen. Now, this is looking a little bit more interesting. Let's go to Catacala canubialis. And does it live in Florida? Yes, it does. Okay, 
and we can see, look at the variation of coloration on the forewings. Now, guys, this specimen right here from Jim Trowbridge is a lot, is very similar to the one that we just mounted. I'm going to call it Canubialis, Catocala Canubialis. And we are going to go with that. I could be wrong, but and if you if you have a different opinion, uh, please put it in the comments below if you can help me figure. Oh, there's a caterpillar. Look at that. I would love to find some Catocala caterpillars. But one thing about Catocala moths, guys, is that they're they're very variable on the forewing. A lot of them have some highly variable forewings, but ours has that white whitish color in here and it has some of the rust coloration these little rust colored lines in here so i'm guessing that this is what we got and i'm super excited and now let's make our label all right folks we have our underwing moth identified at least i believe so catocala canubialis determined by david fine with with the help of the moth photographers group website i'll confirm with my buddy uh, Jeff Slotten, who knows these Catocala moths down here very, very well. And then we, you know, this is, I'm going to make a more uh, detailed label, but this is just so we don't forget where we caught it. Gulf Hammock, Levy County, Florida, April 6, 19, uh, 2022. So uh, we will have these labels ready. So when we take this moth off the board, we can just pin the label on immediately and be secure with that. So uh, that's about it for this Catocala moth. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video on this species of underwing moths. Uh, we love underwing moths. I wish we had more of them down here in South Florida, but it is what it is. We'll, just, we'll take the tropics, all right? We've got plenty of tropical species to cover. And if you want to check out some of our tropical moths that we have down here in the Florida Keys in South Florida, we have a website keysmoths.com where we show you all 600 species of moths that we found in the Florida Keys. And so uh, we would love to show those to you. So check them out and we will uh, check out our website. We'll show you all 600 species there plus 100 butterfly species. And um, give me a thumbs up on the video if you liked it. If you learned something, um, great. Let me know what you want me to hunt for next and we will do so. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell for notifications because when you hit the bell, we you'll get notified every time we put out a cool new video. We're gonna go over all the butterflies and moths that we can from South Florida, North Florida, Florida Keys, whatever. So guys, take care. Let's get out there and enjoy uh, our, our beautiful state of Florida and the moths they are in. Take care.